It will be life in prison for Alan Phillips after a jury in Park County today found that 71 year old guilty of killing two women in 1982. He finally went to the trial. He went to trial for the deaths of Annette Schnee and Bobby Joe Oberholzer last year. Their bodies were found at Breckenridge in January of 1982. Phillips was not arrested until last year. His DNA matched blood found on one of the victim's gloves. On a snowy night in Colorado, Officers rescued a man who had gotten his truck stuck in the snow on the treacherous Guanella Pass, high in the Rocky Mountains. Unbeknownst to them, they just rescued a criminal that they would spend the next 40 years searching for. What crime did he commit? Welcome back to Mysterious 7, where we shed light on under-the-radar cases from across the globe. Today, we'll discuss a cold case finally solved after 40 years of searching for a man that was rescued on the very night of the crime. Without any further ado, let's get into it. This case takes us to Colorado, specifically around Guanella Pass, high in the Rocky Mountains. Guanella Pass is best known for its ski resort and hiking trails. It's a generally peaceful place, but this was not the case on January 6, 1982. That day brought a brutal winter storm to Colorado and became unforgettable to many in the state. On the evening of January 6, 1982, 29-year-old Barbara Oberholzer, also known as Bobby Joe, called her husband Jeff Oberholzer after work to let him know that she was going to be late. A couple of friends had invited her for drinks, so she was going to be out for a while. She also told Jeff that she'd make her way home by hitching a ride. Hitchhiking was very common in Breckenridge in those days. Jeff and Bobby Joe didn't live in Breckenridge. They lived in Alma, which was about a 30-minute drive from Breckenridge. After falling asleep waiting for Bobby Joe, Jeff suddenly awoke and checked the time. Bobby Joe definitely should have been home by then because she did not normally stay out very late. Jeff got into his truck and went straight to the pub where Bobby Joe said she'd be. Her friends were surprised to see Jeff, and they told him that Bobby Joe had left much earlier. That was when Jeff knew something was wrong. He went to the police that night and reported his wife missing, but officers didn't file a missing person report. In those days, it was customary to wait at least 24 hours before filing a missing person report for an adult. Thankfully, this is no longer the case. On the same night, a plane heading to California flew over Guanella Pass. On the plane was a Colorado sheriff, Harold E. Bray, who looked out the window and saw something that caught his attention. It was flashing lights. Being a sheriff, Harold quickly understood that the lights were a distress signal. He alerted the pilot who noted the coordinates and informed the Federal Aviation Administration. Soon, rescuers were able to locate the flashing lights and found a pickup truck that had gotten stuck in the snow. In the truck was a 30-year-old man named Alan Lee Phillips. Alan had gotten stranded while trying to cross the Guanella Mountain Pass. He was traveling without snow chains, which is why his truck got stuck in a snowdrift. Just when Alan had given up and thought he'd freeze to death in his pickup truck, he heard a plane flying overhead. Alan used his headlights to flash the SOS signal. But the officers became curious. When rescuers asked Alan why he was out there in the middle of the night, Alan said he was coming from a friend's place in Bailey and was heading home when he got caught in the snowstorm. His response satisfied the officers' curiosity, and they didn't find anything else suspicious. They simply gave Alan a lecture about preparing his vehicle for winter weather and subsequently dropped him off at home. The following day, Jeff received a call from a man telling him that Bobby Joe's driver's license was found on his property. He drove over there and picked it up. Jeff then gathered his friends and together they started searching for Bobby Joe along the highway. Soon, Jeff spotted a blue backpack in the snow. They pulled over to have a closer look and there, they saw Bobby's glove with a splatter of blood and several tissues also soaked in blood. At that point, authorities were notified of the findings and Jeff was sent home to wait while law enforcement and volunteers continued the search. Eventually, Bobby Joe's body was found off of Highway 9 near the summit of Hoosier Pass. 
After her body was examined, it was revealed that she was shot twice in the chest. Her wrists were tied with a plastic cord, and there were shell casings at the scene. During the search, Bobby Joe's belongings were found scattered far and near. Along with her body, they found a set of keys and an orange sock. Though the keys were identified to be Bobby Joe's, the orange sock, however, was not. On the same day, a 22-year-old woman named Annette Schnee was reported missing. Her disappearance was reported when she failed to show up at work. Annette worked at Breckenridge Holiday Inn and lived in Blue River. The last time anyone saw Annette was at a pharmacy in Breckenridge on January the 6th, 1982. According to those who saw her before she went missing, she planned to hitchhike home to change her clothes to get ready for her next shift, as she often did. But after she left, she was never seen again. What happened to Annette? Who killed Bobby Joe? Were the two connected? The officers began their investigations and were open about their suspects. They had set their eyes on Jeff Oberholzer, although no evidence connected him to the crime. Investigators found it suspicious that Jeff had no alibi to back up his claim that he was sleeping at the time of Bobby Joe's murder. Jeff was interviewed multiple times for both Bobby Joe's death and Annette's disappearance. Initially, Jeff told officers that he didn't know Annette, but later called to let them know that he had given Annette a ride months before she went missing. He said he was reminded of Annette's face as he'd been seeing her pictures a lot on the news. The officers were not satisfied yet. They asked Jeff to take a polygraph, which he passed. He'd always maintained his innocence, as well as annoyance with investigators insisting on his involvement. The investigation continued for months with no new leads. Exactly six months later, Annette's body was found on July 6, 1982, in a rural area in Park County, 20 miles from where she was last seen. She'd been shot once in the back. Annette had been sexually assaulted, and it seemed that she may have been redressed by the perpetrator, or forced to redress, as her clothing was in disarray. She was noticeably missing an orange sock, which looked like the one found with Bobby Joe's body. After the examination of the two murders, investigators believed that a single person committed both crimes. They estimated that Annette was picked up around 5 p.m. on January 6, 1982, and driven to the remote area where she was sexually assaulted and murdered, possibly in an attempt to stop her from escaping. The unknown suspect then went back to Breckenridge where he found his second victim, Bobby Joe, and abducted her. Bobby Joe was not sexually assaulted, but was shot twice in the chest, which made investigators believe that she might have been trying to have a conversation with her attacker when she was shot. According to Jeff, Bobby Joe would never accept a ride from a total stranger, which made him believe that someone who lived in the area and knew Bobby Joe had committed the crime. By 2015, over 100 suspects had been investigated, and at the time it was believed that the person responsible for the murders had Park County connections. Other suspects included a cab driver who had assaulted a hitchhiker in 1982, and while in jail, had bragged to a cellmate about committing two murders and getting away with it. Two other persons of interest were the woman that had been talking to Annette before her abduction, as well as a man whose photograph was found in her wallet. Neither was ever identified nor questioned. About 10 suspects were thoroughly investigated and had their DNA collected. Investigators also worked with two psychics, but their combined efforts did not lead to any breaks in the case. Eventually, the case went completely cold since none of the suspects could be definitively tied to the murders. Years later, Jeff was finally cleared by DNA evidence after years of suspicion. Since the time of the tragic murders, the case has been handled by numerous agencies over the years and was featured on the television show Unsolved Mysteries in 1993 and again in 2007 on the Discovery Channel's Sensing Murders. However, in 1995, the Colorado Bureau of Investigation Denver Crime Laboratory conducted DNA testing to determine if the bloody glove and tissue that belonged to Bobby Joe contained Bobby Joe or Annette's DNA. Results indicated that blood on the glove and tissue didn't belong to either of them. 
In 2021, the case was put forward by the Colorado Bureau of Investigation for Genetic Genealogy. After extensive searching through databases, a forensic genealogist analyst with the United Data Connect was finally able to name Alan Lee Phillips, who was known to officers, as one of the two possible matches to the genetic profile obtained from Bobby Joe's glove. Investigators found that Alan had resided in Colorado since the early 1970s, and that he lived in Fairplay, Denver, Idaho Springs, and Georgetown before moving to Dumont. In early January 2021, officers placed Allen under surveillance, and on February 20th, surveillance indicated that Allen went to a sonic drive through in Littleton and then to the Dumont Post Office. There, Allen threw away a brown bag inside the post office that was retrieved by police and taken to the DNA laboratory at CBI Denver. On February 23rd, the DNA samples from the brown bag were tested and found to be consistent with genetic profiles developed from the glove and tissue that belonged to Bobby Joe. Finally, on February 24th, 2021, Allen was arrested and taken to the Park County Jail where he awaited his trial. On March 22nd, 2021, Allen was charged on multiple counts, including first-degree murder and second-degree kidnapping for both Annette and Bobby Joe. The trial began on August 29, 2022, in Park County District Court. Park County Detective Sergeant Wendy Kippel and Park County Special Deputy Charlie McCormack, who have both been key components in the prosecution of the case, gave their testimonies in the trial. The testimonies included strange occurrences on the night of the murder. According to Park County Sheriff Tom McGraw, Allen got stuck on Guanella Pass on the night of the murders and they found the back of his vehicle submerged in the snow with his headlights pointing upward. David Montoya, a fire chief with the Empire Fire Department, was one of the first responders to Allen's situation and drove him home. He said he noticed a cut on Allen's forehead and blood on his jacket. According to McGraw, that incident had an impact on the trial because it placed Phillips in the area of 285, where pertinent evidence was located. This was not the first time Allen had trouble with the law. He was once arrested for burglary and assault in 1973. Though the 1973 case could not be used in the trial, it showed Allen's track record of assault. In the 1973 incident, Allen picked up a female hitchhiker coming out of Breckenridge, took her to a cabin off County Road 1, dragged her out of his vehicle, and beat her in the head with a rock. According to McGraw, who narrated the event, the woman screamed for him to stop and cried out, I have a baby girl. Alan then broke into the cabin, cleaned her up, and dropped her off in fair play. The woman went to the police to report the harrowing incident. Alan was arrested and he confessed to the whole crime back in 1973. The night Alan was arrested in 2021, McGraw noticed some interesting occurrences that he shared in court. En route to the Park County Jail in fair play, with Alan seated in the back of a patrol vehicle, they passed the intersection where Alan picked up one of the victims in Breckenridge. They also passed the murder scene on Hoosier Pass, as well as the site where he dumped Annette's body in Sacramento Creek. McGraw recalled Alan complaining that he felt like he was going to be sick on three occasions at each of those three locations. He said he gagged, but he never threw up but he was impacted by his return to each of those places. On September 15, 2022, after just five hours of deliberation, a jury convicted Alan Phillips on all eight charges in the murders of Annette Shi and Bobby Joe Oberholzer. When Alan committed the murders, he was 31 years old. And even though he had once assaulted a hitchhiker, no one connected the dots. He was never a suspect in either case. He continued living his life normally. He got married and had children with no one chasing him. It was 39 years of freedom, according to Annette's sister, who said, You had 39 years of freedom, and hopefully now, it will all be taken away from you. 39 years of freedom too long. Alan Phillips, who's now 71 years old, faces life in prison. He'll be formally sentenced on November 7, 2022. With the help of genetic genealogy and some very determined investigators, justice for Bobby Joe and Annette will finally be served after 40 years. 
Let us know what you think about this story in the comment section. And if you like this video, like, share, and subscribe for more. See you at the next one.